Hello everyone, welcome back to a new session in dentistry and more. Today's topic is amylogenesis imperfecta. So in developmental anomalies, we have learned the various categories of anomalies. It depends on size, number, shape of teeth and also the defects of enamel and dentine. So amylogenesis coming under the defects of enamel. So let's get into the details of amylogenesis imperfecta. Amylogenesis imperfecta. The name itself gives some clue about this problem that is imperfect genesis of amyloblast. So genesis uh, is nothing but creation Amyloblast means we know it give rise to uh, enamel in future. So there is an imperfect uh, production or creation of amyloblast or amyloblast is not working perfectly. So it is a problem associated with amyloblast that means enamel. So enamel is not forming properly. So imperfect formation of enamel is nothing but amylogenesis imperfecta so it has got uh, many names one is ai so ai is very popular nowadays so the popular name is artificial intelligence but in dentistry ai is amylogenesis imperfecta and also we have another name hereditary enamel dysplasia so it is a hereditary condition dysplasia plasia means the production of cells so we know aplasia metaplasia dysplasia is improper production and also the hereditary brown enamel it is because of the color of particular enamel in amelogenesis imperfecta and also hereditary brown opalescent teeth because of the opalescent appearance of this teeth so that is about the various names it has got. Now let's see what is AI. It is a group of hereditary defects of enamel. It's not associated with any other generalized defects. So it is solely exclusively attacking enamel or on the enamel. It is an entirely ectodermal disturbances. Normal mesoderm is present. So we know endoderm, ectoderm and mesoderm are present various tooth layers or tooth germs and ectoderm give rise to uh, enamel. So it is entirely an ectodermal disturbances not affecting mesoderm or other layers and it is a X-linked autosomal recessive or autosomal dominant disease. So it's about its uh, genetical transmission it is a x-linked autosomal recessive or autosomal dominant disease so how it transform transfer from parent to child so etiology is nothing but it is a hereditary condition so obviously there will be mutation in proteins so we have many proteins in enamel formation such as enamelin amylogenin amyloblastin teflin or amylotin so either any of these proteins will be muted so mutation will create a improper or imperfect enamel so we have basically three types of amylogenesis imperfecta before that we need to know various stages of tooth formation the first is a formative stage where the deposition of organic matrix happening the second stage is calcification stage where the matrix is getting mineralized and the third stage is it crystallizes enlarges and matures so these are the three processes starting from formative stage to maturity state so if something happens in these stages will result in enamel uh, imperfecta or enamel improper enamel that is if it affects on the formative stage it will result in hypoplastic AI if it is affecting, affecting the calcification it is creating a hypocalcified AI and if it is affecting the maturation stage there will be 
hypomaturation so we know hypo means it is less than normal hyper means it is more than normal so it is not actually forming up to the normal stage it is something less than normal so hypoplastic hypocalcified and hypomaturative so hypoplastic uh, along with that we have one more type that is a fourth type which is a combination of hypoplastic and hypomaturative type it commonly seen along with taurodontism so hope you know what is taurodontism so that is a fourth type along with hypoplastic hypocalcified and hypomaturative so these two combined hypoplastic and hypomaturative combined with taurodontism will be the fourth type so the most common type is hypoplastic one it accounts for 60 to 73 percent then the hypomaturative one it accounts for 20 to 40 percent and the least one is hypocalcified it is around 7 percentage of total AI so in hypoplastic we have inadequate matrix formation because it's affecting the formative stage and reduced enamel thickness there will be abnormal contour the contour will be affected we have a perfect contour in a normal tooth aligned uh, or normal tooth anatomy the contour will be there the tooth will be contacting uh, mesial side and distal side so that will be lost in hyperplastic that is absence of interproximal contact because of the tooth will be where so it will be lost at the proximal surfaces it creates a particular appearance that is picket fence appearance before that it has a dentine and pulp chamber perfectly normal so it is affecting only enamel so we'll come back to the picket fence appearance so it gives rise to a picket fence appearance so what is picket fence so this is a picket fence because the interproximal areas are lost you imagine this black thing as a tooth the interproximal areas are lost because of the enamel enamel is very fragile it is lost at the interproximal area ultimately it gives rise to this type of appearance when we take a radiograph this type of fence we have seen in railway station hope you have seen in railway station this type of fence in uh, normal houses this type of fencing is not there so this type of fencing we know we have seen in railway station because it has interdental spaces similar to the picket fence so square shaped crown spaced and spacing between teeth and there will be picket fence appearance in hypoplastic amylogenesis imperfecta in hypocalcified the enamel will be softer than normal and it tends to chip from underlying dentine because of its softness and the enamel has a peculiar appearance that is snow capped teeth so it will be like snow capped snow will be there on the teeth that is nothing but more whiter appearance it is white opaque areas so these white opaque areas are seen as snow capped teeth so the affected enamel exhibits radio density similar to dentine that is a problem so it will be very difficult to differentiate enamel and dentine from radiograph because the radio density of enamel and dentine usually is very different but in this case the enamel and dentine is having equal radio density the enamel matrix will be normal and obviously the calcification is very poor and normal thickness will be there now we'll move on to the hypo maturity type the teeth become stained and rapidly wear down because the maturation process is hampered and and it become easily stained and easily wear down because of its thin uh, enamel so enamel is less radio opaque than dentine and hypomaturity type so i forgot to tell you about the prevalence of this condition that is 1 to 700 to 1 to 15000 now we'll move on to the clinical features so what are the clinical features of 
amelogenesis imperfecta the most common clinical feature is discoloration of teeth and lack of proximal contact and loss of vertical dimension so vertical dimension will be lost why because the incisal edges will be easily wear down and it, it creates a open bite and there will be loss of vertical dimension and decreased masticatory uh, deficiency mastication will be always affected because of this uh, thin uh, friable enamel so enamel will be easily uh, wear down from the it easily chips off from uh, dentin so always the mastication will be a problem and there will be anterior open bite and posterior open bite open bite is nothing but when teeth are occluding in normal condition there will not be any space between the teeth even if it is in the anterior side or posterior side but open bite means if teeth are occluding the teeth will not contact that is anterior if it is not contacting in the anterior side that will be anterior open bite if the teeth are not contacting at posterior side that will be posterior open bite and negative overjet so usually we have positive overjet that is the upper teeth um, at the front position and the lower teeth at the back position negative overjet is nothing but the reverse of it that is the cross bite condition the lower teeth will be at front position and the upper teeth will be inside of it so that will be their negative overjet and there will be altered vertical jaw relation so the vertical height and its the jaw relation will be changed so in radiographs we have already seen uh, picket fins appearance in hypoplastic so usually enamel uh, sometimes may appear completely lost or completely absent in radiographs sometimes radio density is similar to dentin making differentiation between enamel and dentin very difficult because usually how uh, in radiographs are interpreted the enamel and the dentin the radio density the enamel has high mineralization content that is around 96 percentage compared to dentin dentin has much lesser than 96 so this density mineral density is different so the radio density will be similarly different but in amelogenesis imperfecta the enamel is hypomineralized so that's why there will be uh, not much difference between the mineral content so likewise the radio density will be almost same so it is very difficult to differentiate enamel and dentin from a radiograph well coming to the histological explanation the hypoplastic there will be defect in matrix formation and sometimes there will be total absence of matrix in hypocalcification the defects in matrix structure and mineral deposition in hypomaturative there will be alteration in enamel rods and rod sheath structures so that is a histologic part in, in histologic there will be matrix Uh, absence sometimes with defects and hypocalcification it is a matrix uh, mineral deposition and matrix structure defects in hypomaturative there will be enamel rods and rod sheath changes so how do we treat amelogenesis imperfecta we have various options to treat amelogenesis imperfecta uh, we can go for a ortho treatment for correcting anterior open bite and vertical growth pattern we need to do a ortho treatment sometimes not in all the cases sometimes we need to uh, do surgical approach that is extraction of few teeth and surgical correction of anterior uh, open bite and restorative treatment will be very common like the composite restoration composite restorations are uh, tooth colored restorations because since it is a anterior teeth the front teeth so aesthetic is a concern so uh, we can do composite restorations and also prosthetic uh, methods like uh, crowns can be done full metal crowns uh, on posterior teeth and ceramic or on crowns in anterior or also we can do veneering so that's about our treatment part 
so that's how we uh, finishes our amylogenesis imperfecta it is a defect developmental anomaly related to the defect of enamel it has got many names hereditary enamel dysplasia hereditary brown enamel hereditary brown or palacin teeth it is a ectodermal disturbance mutation in any of these proteins basically three types hypoplastic calcified maturity and picket fence is seen in hypoplastic snow capped seen in hypocalcified and the clinical features uh, radiographic and histological features and various uh, treatment options so i'll come up with a new session on dentistry and more thank you